Hello, Misty. Hey. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hey, buddy. How are you? You wanted to come out and say hi? Oh, sweetie pie. But yeah, it is snowing right now. You just can't maybe see. Now we have a live studio audience while we're, we're, we're vibing here talking. So I made a big, big oopsie last week. As some of you guys know, I lost my deck completely. Um, so, that was a painful L. This week's drama is that I completely missed out on the Comfy Hobbies League Cup yesterday. Ooh. I, uh, I played myself. I played myself. But it's getting a bit windy. Let's get inside and it's also getting a little cold. Also, today is, uh, today is St. Patrick's Day. We got the fun green Pokemon pants. As some of you guys know, I'm signed to Comfy Hobbies. I'm on team Comfy Hobbies, code sneaker talk for 5% off at Comfy Hobbies. They ran their first ever league cup yesterday and I even promoted it a little bit. It also sold out too, even before I promoted it. They did a 52 player cap this time around and um, I had an arrangement involved for this cup where I also will be getting, you know, some food. Uh, the, I was gonna get like a quarter pounder meal from McDonald's, shout out to Comfy Hobbies. And uh, in my mind, I like, I, I synchronized the timing of that meal with it being for dinner because the last time Comfy hooked it up for the league challenge, we had it at 5 p.m. And uh, for the league cup this weekend, it was for noon. So, oh man, Ooh. first of all, it just, it just sucks missing out on your home stores like first ever league cup. But these, these we're, we're getting closer and closer to uh, the World Championships to NEIC, the cutoff day for you guys, no qualifying for Worlds this year. Each cup you don't attend or each cup you miss attending really, really sucks because there's a lot of pressure to get a lot more championship points in each of these cups. And these cups are super, super high value. So I feel so dumb, I feel so bad. I was literally in the shower yesterday at like 1.30 or 2 p.m. enjoying my nice shower. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have my fun awesome league cup today at five. And then it took me two minutes in the shower to realize, oh crap, the, the tournament started an hour and a half ago. Bruh. I've never felt this dumb in a long, long time. Like completely getting the times mixed up because Comfy usually does like all the tournaments at five or 6 p.m. This is the first time they've really ever done it at like noon. So I got punished for it. Oh, I got punished for it. This week, is the final week of practice, you could say, the last week before Vancouver Regionals, which is happening this Saturday and Sunday. We're going to Vancouver, I'm excited, but this is our last week of practice. So in today's vlog, I don't know if this is gonna be one long vlog or if we do a bunch of daily vlogs again. There is about three tournaments left where I can really practice, get some IRL, uh, experience, get some last minute testing in. A lot of you guys probably have like these 58 card decks in your head and you're like trying to figure out the last two cards to make that deck perfect. I'm at that point right now. Today we're heading over to Sunny Hobbies, uh, the store where we went a couple of weeks ago in the most recent vlog as well for their league challenge. The last two challenges there were like three rounds each or four rounds each. This is one question a lot of people were asking me. They're like, what is the best time of the year to get championship points? It's kind of at the end of the season because at the start of a Pokemon season, everyone's playing, everyone's excited. It's a like, new format, you know, new cards. But the thing is, I just got second at like the last four or so challenges, like not necessarily in a row, but those second places I got, they're worth the same as the super hard, sweaty second places I got at the start of the season where there are five or six tournament rounds all the time. Now I'm getting second basically for free in a lot of these challenges and I'm like, I don't even get any points off from these uh, because they have a best finish limit of six. This is a situation a lot of players are also in. You have to replace your poor performances. So you get six finishes and challenges. I got first, 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 second, second, second. So me attending any league challenge the second I lose one game, it's not really worth me being there anymore. And it kind of sucks because you kind of lose like all motivation to play Pokemon for that rest of the day because there's nothing to play for because you've already maxed out your points other than just for practice or for store credit. That's where we're at now. The challenges have to be first place or bust. Uh, the last challenge we had at Sunny Hobbies, 
the homie Andrew Amistad won, and he was in the exact same position as me, where he had three first places and three second places. If you guys don't know, the Greater Toronto area is one of the most, like, talent stacked regions in the world not even in the country in the world i've said it many times before but like there's tournaments where i played against uh rowan stavenaugh and raymond long back to back and at that tournament we even had toward rec love there uh, there's a lot of tournaments where you play and in the first couple of rounds you're getting people who have multiple top 16 top 8 finishes or regional wins. It is super super sweaty. Luckily because there are so many stores as well in the greater Toronto area there's going to be uh, schedule conflicts you could say. So these top players all can't go to the exact same tournament at the same day. They have to spread out. So. That's what we're hoping for today, that there aren't any super major top players, you could say. I know there's a bunch of other events happening today too. I'm having a good feeling about today. I'm expecting today to be one of those tournaments where it's just three or four rounds and that's it. So if I'm able to, I'll maybe record the, the gameplay or something like that, because that's something you guys have been asking. And also, I, I hate to the yap so long. Let me get my bread. Someone the other day commented um, that it was it was getting on their nerves, or not getting on their nerves, it was just getting, it was annoying them, I guess, how I was talking about misfortunes in the game, doing my recaps and stuff. And it's a card game, you know, people are gonna get unlucky, either myself or the other person's gonna get unlucky, and I think I, I wanna talk about the misfortune, and, and you know, it's a card game, there's luck involved. But what would you guys wanna see out of these tournament vlogs, as I make them more of a daily occurrence, or just like, what do you wanna see in the, daily, uh, in the recaps? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Any criticism, I love the feedback because I take vlog creation very seriously. So if I can improve the videos and make them more fun for you guys to watch, more viewable, let me know in the comments down below what I need to do. Also, common question of the day, are you team Nutella or team peanut butter and jelly? Today we're team Nutella. We have time today, we're not in a rush. Some people were commenting how they get stressed watching my videos because I'm always in a rush and I'm always late. We're changing that, we're not late today. We're showing up for the tournament, even better, right? We're showing up. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna finish making my food, drink my coffee, get caffeinated, and we'll catch you guys closer at uh, at Sunny Hobbies. And we'll just say bye to Misty one more time. Hello. Hello. Oh my gosh. You be good today, okay? You. Hey, 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 come here. You be good today, okay, sweetie pie? You be good today, yes. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> it's like she's smiling. <laughs>
to do dedicated like voiceovers for each of these games and upload them to the channel. So I'll be sharing with you guys maybe some of the key uh, points of the matchup or share tips with you as a Maridon player, what to look for in these matchups for, for better success. And also if you uh, want to counter the knowledge I'm, I'm guess, I guess I'm sharing, uh, you can use it against us as well. So here is the 60 card Maridon pile I played. It has a mixture of both Magnazone V and V Star, but we also have the Ampharos EX in here as well as a surprise attacker for a late game being able to swing for 220 to 240 off of a pokemon that just randomly evolved into an ampharos is really really good next up we also have two double turbo energies in this list along with 13 lightning the great thing about double turbo energy is a common play that certain decks will make is they're going to try and stall you out and then snipe your bench or just stall you out and hopefully that buys them enough time to win the game the common play is they'll counter catcher or boss up a Flaffy, two retreat costs to retreat a Flaffy, double turbo energy does fulfill that requirement and also it also uh, works for the attack cost for Ampharos EX and it can also be the energy you discard to do an extra uh, I believe extra 100 damage making your total output 220 for one electric and one DTE. Some other key inclusions for this list I decided to test out the Hisuian Heavy Ball. There are certain games where it is very very painful when you do prize a one-off of a particular Pokemon. Some other key cards I have here are Pokemon Poke Gear 3.0 and Pokemon Catcher. Uh, these cards synergize very well with uh, the Magna Magnazone V-Star in the deck. Fantastic being able to have extra dig looking for supporter cards and also having a potential coin flip boss with Pokemon Catcher. You can search out the Pokemon Catcher, of course, with cards like Arvin and with uh, Peony, which we also have a copy of one. For switching cards, it is a little on the skimpier side. We have one rope and one switch, and that's because, again, double turbo energy does act as a switch. So I decided to go with, with go at it with this route, and we have two beach court as well. A lot of Maridon lists also play three bosses orders. Some will bring it down to two if they're doing the peony build with heavy Pokemon catchers. For this, we decided to go with two bosses orders, uh, one Pokemon catcher, and actually one Serena. I find Serena to be a very fun card in testing. I'm actually really enjoying it at the moment uh, because if you combo Serena, you get some draw, but then if you also have your Mew on the bench, you potentially get extra draw too. Being able to combo Serena and Mew's ability restart is pretty handy, but also having a uh, boss's orders available as a uh, option, basically as your Serena, you can bring up Pokemon like Rotom V, uh, Luminion, and basically one shot those two prize support Pokemon that electric decks like to feast on. This deck felt really good to play for this particular tournament and uh, I'm gonna continue evolving it the last couple of weeks we have before rotation. I am definitely going to experiment with more Serenas in the deck. I think Serena could be a fantastic, fantastic card for Vancouver. And again, I am heavily testing Magnazone and Ampharos whether or not I want them. I'm also testing Regilecki VMAX as well as another option for considering for Vancouver. There's your look at the 60 card list. Now let's get into the gameplay. So here is our very first round or uh, well, second round of the tournament because we got a no show uh, loss or just because we were late, we get the round one loss. So this is technically round two, but this is our game number one. It's against Justin Se. He is a very, very strong player. I wanna say he plays Gardevoir in this event. I had a very rough start. I started off this game with Maridon and a handful of energies and another Maridon. So no real item cards, no supporters to really fix myself up, starting it very anticlimactic, not turbo at all. The big things for this matchup in particular against Gardevoir is you need to be able to ampy very much essentially three turns in a row or take uh, two prizes in three separate turns. That's the, the best way to close out Gardevoir. So there are games where if you prize your Iron Hands, you pretty much are gonna have a very rough game because Iron Hands was kind of that like equalizer in this matchup, uh, especially because you win, you wanna win this game as quick as possible. Gardevoir decks get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Once the Gardevoir player is able to discard uh, more of the useless cards and dig through their deck, those refinements, those cards that they keep drawing into are always gonna be good cards, better cards, and uh, basically, the longer your game goes against a Gardevoir player, the harder it's gonna be because there's gonna be more energies in their discard pile. And then there's gonna be many options and, and opportunities for those Gardevoir players to use cards like Reversal Energy and Counter Catcher, which absolutely punish 
uh, decks that like to take prizes quick or just quicker than them, especially Maridon. One of the key things I wanna mention is uh, Magnazone felt really good in this because it limits their uh, their refinement ability. They're forced to now bench a Manaphy, and if they prize a Manaphy, the, prize their one-off Manaphy, of course, Magnazone can absolutely devour two Ralts or two Curlias on the bench, which feels amazing. So uh, Magnazone is really strong into this matchup, potentially. Another key play to look out for is the very common counter catcher or boss stall. Uh, they often like to do this play on your Flappies because they're a two energy retreat Pokemon along with Zapdos. So you want to preemptively attach your energies to your Flappies, Dynamotor at least one just to play it safe. It doesn't even look suspicious that you're gonna evolve into an Ampharos because they just see the energy on your Mareep or Flappy, I mean, uh, thinking, oh, it's just because they wanna be able to retreat later on. But little do they know, it's an Ampharos EX coming soon. And in a perfect world, uh, Ampharos is going to be able to close out the game, knocking out their, Gar knock, not the Gardevoir, because Gardevoir is too healthy, uh, knocking out their Zacian V, one of their only two prizers in their deck. Sometimes they'll play Illumineon, which is very rare. Uh, but yeah, being able to bring out Ampharos is huge. Sometimes they just, they just don't have enough uh, damage output to KO the Ampharos. And you also get to stop them from benefiting from your Flappy being stuck in the active because now it's an Ampharos. Game number two was against Andrew Amistad. He was the winner of the challenge at Sunny Hobbies last month. He was playing Maridon. I was playing Maridon, and I was like, you know what, since we are testing for fun, I will go first. I will happily go first as the Maridon player. Not something you hear very often. The main reason I enjoy going first with this version of the deck is because we do have the double Mareep count and we also have Magnazone. So usually if you're a Maridon player going first, you're not able to apply much pressure at all because a lot of the pressure comes from being able to go second and establishing a squawk ability and, and turboing through your deck and uh, you know, taking one to two prizes on your first turn of attacking, uh, going second. However, this deck, because the way it's built with Magnazone and with the Ampharos there, being able to establish some pressure on your turn one going first is uh, a very highly likely outcome. Grabbing cards like Magnazone feels pretty good because you're bringing out basically a 270 HP Pokemon when it's in V-Star, which they can't one-shot. And you can use your Magnazone to help set up the rest of your board, uh, getting your generators out of your deck, charging more energies. And again, it's a, some, it's a Pokemon they can't easily one-shot. They have to use Raichu in order to one-shot a Magnazone. And of course, you're able to use Magnazone to potentially snipe their Flappies or Mareeps on the bench if you want to limit their uh, energy acceleration with Dynamotor. This game was super, super one-sided. I played it really well, and Andrew just was very unfortunate with the draws. His electric generators were not cooking, and I find it really hilarious too because my version of the deck only has 13 electric energies or lightning energies. Andrew definitely had at least like 15 plus because he played the Peony build, the Turbo build. So your odds of hitting energies are much higher in that build. However, the luck was on my side, you could say, but I did do a lot of thinning uh, with with my with my build of the deck. Unfortunately, Andrew was not able to take any prizes this game, and we just uh, took all our prizes before he could really do anything. So, uh, I just, I'm really well versed in the Maridon matchup. Uh, some pro tips for the Maridon mirror match is you always want to go second, uh, so you can start taking prizes. You never want to leave a two prizer in the active ever. You never do that. It basically is a prize race of who can get two, two, two first. Don't put yourself in a position where they can take the first two prizes. Be careful with benching and uh, like limiting your bench and over benching and whatnot because Raikou V is a very strong attacker in that matchup and Raikou uh, of course benefits from bigger bench sizing for their attack power level. So you you never want to put them at magic numbers to hurt you but sometimes you could put yourself at the magic numbers to hurt them just as long as you're taking those two prizes first. Round number three was against Sebastian our resident rapid strike player and uh, I think this he told me after this this was his last tournament uh, for playing Rapid Strike. He's retiring it after this, and he, I think he's gonna play the Torrid Pile uh, for a little bit before rotation, which is pretty crazy. So Rapid Strike used to be a insanely, insanely hard matchup for Maridon because you guessed it, 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 hits, it hits us for weakness. Fighting does double damage, to us, lightning, electric, Pokemon, whatever you want to call us. In your best case scenario to win this game, you have to heavily rely on Squawkabilly, uh, Mew EX, those two Pokemon, because they are resistant to fighting and they also have attacks that are very good in the matchup. You can use Squawkabilly's attack 
to uh, do 20 damage and then it charges up two lightning energies to your bench Pokemon. So you can charge up your Raichu, you can charge up your Mew EX. Mew EX can also, well, it, it, it's attack genome hacking, copies your opponent's active attack. So you'd typically want to copy their G-Max rapid flow and then KO their Octillery's on the bench, which is their main engine for the deck. Uh, you could also swing for knockout depending on the scenario because you are hitting them for weakness because Mew is a psychic type Pokemon. In terms of where you are going to put your uh, certain cards uh, like Bravery Charm, your Bravery Charm you're going to want to put it onto your Squawk Billy usually or if you have to put it onto your active Pokemon so when it does get hit for weakness it doesn't instantly get knocked out. Some other major factors in this matchup are the Mareep and Flappies. You want your Flappies to be charging up energy as much as they can and so Raichu becomes a huge, huge threat as well. Pretty much always in order to beat Rapid Strike Urshifu, you're gonna at least attack once with Raichu with six energies dynamic spark for 360 onto their uh, the Rapid Strike Urshifu. And actually fun fact, the last time we played against Sebastian was at the challenge uh, last month at this store where I did, I believe like 1,540 damage. I attacked him with my Raichu V for every energy in my deck onto their Inteleon V for weakness, which felt amazing. It was really cool announcing that attack for 1,540. Just imagine that. You hear someone across the table from you saying, yeah, I'm just gonna, uh, I'll Dynamic Spark for 1,540. It felt amazing. And that's because uh, you, you can't hit those numbers very often. It's very rare. But yeah, if you're not able to use certain cards like Mew or Squawkabilly, or at least take a huge KO with Raichu, this is probably one of the hardest matchups you can play. Uh, so yeah, just play with those uh, those factors in mind. All right, so the tournament just wrapped up and we have a quick winner's interview with the winner of today's Pokemon League Challenge. We have Felix. Here with Felix. Felix, the winner of today's challenge. He won the cup here last time too, taking down two Maridons. This is now like your home turf. Felix, how you feeling after your uh, challenge win today? Uh, so happy. <laughs> I don't have to go any more challenges. This is the last one you needed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all first, you're chilling. Yep. Nice. What do you play today? I play Gardevoir. EX. Gardevoir EX. Did you have any key cards that help you in today's matchups? Professor Turo helps me in round two. Yeah. With that's up Athena's map. Planning to play Gardevoir for Vancouver? Yeah. Is that a high chance? Are you playing the same 60 you've been playing lately or is there anything you're testing? Testing... I think... Right now the 60 is okay, but Avery and no VIP might be a better choice. Any decks that are gonna, gonna scare you at uh, Vancouver you're trying to avoid? Or you're like really preparing or practicing for it? Mirror match. Like other matchups are pretty competent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so much. Um, if anything is scary, so like Keone and Miradon. Okay. That's ends you the game in three turns. Yeah. How do you feel about Gardevoir after rotation? You think you'll still play it or what? Uh, I think I'm still playing it. Uh, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. Depends. Because you're using the cape. So it depends the meta. If there's a loss pack in the heavy. Okay. It might be worse. And is there any new decks you're looking forward to testing with uh, temporal forces? Firstly, God of War and Great Tusk. <laughs> Great Tusk. Yeah. Okay. It's Sick. a fun deck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on first place again today, man. Good stuff. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Radon's good. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the script for today's uh, interview. Yeah. All right, we are heading over to Natty's house now to uh, to watch Love is Blind. I believe the last episode and the live reunion or reunion. Love is Blind is amazing. If you want some great reality TV, that is one of my top tier recommendations. Final record for today was two wins and two losses. Because we were late, we automatically get demoted to the bottom of the two twos, which is painful. I had some pretty fun practice, you know. It kind of sucks playing a tournament knowing that there's nothing you can literally gain other than practice, but it just, li life hits you. Life hits you sometimes. And it's, again, it's all my fault for being late. Like there's so many small things I could have done differently today. Oh, I was like five seconds away from, from getting into the tournament. Yeah, li literally five seconds away because they were just starting then. Um, but yeah, uh, congrats to Felix on another win. He now has six challenge wins, so I'm very proud of him. And uh, now we have to head over to Pizza 21, grab some delicious pepperoni pizza, and uh, vibe out the rest of the day. If you guys are again enjoying these vlogs, comment down below, uh, <laughs> comment down below Pizza Gang, 
and your favorite toppings for pizza if you really made it to the end. Because I asked you guys a common question the other day earlier, but now we have a bonus one. I'm gonna go chill now, and uh, if you wanna hang out some more, watch some more, more, some more Pokemon tournament vlogs, click on screen right here, and consider subscribing. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.